Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go over how to install WordPress. So WordPress is uh, open source uh, software that you can either install on your own web host or have a web hosted solution for you. Um, you might notice that there's two versions of WordPress, there's WordPress.org and WordPress.com. Both are the same software, they're the same software that's used to give you a CMS for you to, um, for CMS, that for you to um, manage your content, um, upload any blogs, things like that. The main difference between them is actually just the way it's hosted. Um, so with WordPress dot, uh, with WordPress.org, it's self-hosted, so you need to, uh, you're more responsible with the way your site is hosted in terms of updates, maintenance, things like that. Um, and then WordPress.com, um, it's managed for you uh, between different plans as well. There's a free version and then it goes all the way up to premium. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about how to install WordPress and then later on how to kind of move it onto a uh, hosting platform, basically. Um, so there's two ways to install WordPress. You can either use a hosting platform, like for example, Bluehost, um, that offer one-click um, WordPress installation. So Word, uh, Bluehost is a web hosting platform um, that will man help manage your website, but it also just means that once you buy a hosting plan with Bluehost, you can, ease, you can uh, easily just uh, click into your dashboard and set up WordPress and manage all your installations from there. Um, there's a lot of hosting platforms that offer one-click installation. Bluehost, uh, HostGator, um, SiteGround, they all offer the one-click installation, so it's a really easy uh, way to install it. Um, it also means because you are using WordPress.org, more than likely you will need to find a hosting provider to help host your website. Um, and so if you get that ready from the beginning, um, then you're able to uh, essentially have the hosting platform ready once your site is ready to go live. Um, we have a we have several videos um, on how to pick a good hosting platform. Um, if you'd like to check them out below. Um, the other option is to install WordPress locally, um, and there's two ways to do that. You can either download the information or you can use a feature called Local by Flywheel. So Local by Flywheel is a separate program and it's by the... Um, Uh, hosting providers called uh, flywheel.com um, and you can download it fully for free. You don't even need to have a hosting plan with uh, Flywheel in order to uh, use it. Um, you just go onto localwp.com and click on download for free and choose your platforms, so whether you're Mac, Windows or Linux and just click uh, Windows and type in your first name, last name, work email, things like that. Once you've submitted that information, it'll start downloading the package for you. Once the program has been downloaded, um, you'll see something like this come up. So it's essentially the local by Flywheel dashboard. Um, so you can see there's a few sites set up already, um, but essentially this will be blank for you and you can start uh, adding new sites from here. So to add a new site, all you need to do is click on this big plus button at the bottom here to add a local site. And you wanna click create new site and you want to give it a site name. Um, and this will be uh, the part of the names of your website. You can go into advanced options and you can choose your own domain and site path, which is essentially where um, the files of your website will remain. Um, but you would just click continue. Um, and then you want to make sure that you have the preferred uh, environment. You can choose custom and you can sort of decide which uh, PHP version you want to use, what web server you want to use, um, what database version you want to use. Um, but if you're unsure about all that, um, you can always go on to preferred um, as the way to go. And you just click continue and you want to give your WordPress username and password. And this is the WordPress username and password that you're going to use to sign in. Um, and the WordPress email as well. Um, and you want to change that to something that uh, you can have access to in case you ever need to reset your profile or anything like that. Again, within uh, advanced options, you can decide if it's a multi-site or not, whether it has a subdirectory or subdomain. Um, and then all you need to do is click uh, add to site or add site. And the uh, WordPress will essentially, or local by flywheel will essentially start uh, packaging up your site and building it for you. 
So you can see the site being added here, creating all the site folders, and it's doing everything for you. You don't need to do any other any other bit of work. Just wait for that to download. Um, and you can see it's adding in all the services for you as well. And you can see it's adding WordPress as well, and everything is being added for you. Once that's been installed, you can see that you have the overview here um, of the website that we just installed. and. Already this has uh, WordPress with the version that we wanted, with the SQL that we wanted and the PHP version that we wanted as well. And there's nothing else that we need to do. All we need to do now is just uh, open the site, edit it however we need to. Um, so to open the site, what you wanna do is click on this one here, um, WP Admin. To open the admin version of the website or the admin login version. Um, and you use the email address that we uh, set up in the beginning. And you can see immediately we were met with the familiar WordPress dashboard. Um, there's nothing more that we need to do. Um, everything's been installed, all the PHP, everything has been installed. Um, and by default, it's using the uh, 2023 theme that we have. Um, you can visit the site and see how it looks um, like this. Um, it's using 2023 theme. It's a completely blank WordPress install. Um, and from there, you can start editing the site how you need to. So in terms of WordPress overview, this is the dashboard and this is where you'll see the main kind of WordPress updates that you have, depending on what themes and plugins that you have installed as well. Um, the first thing that you might want to do is tidy this up a little bit. Um, so for example, remove any bigger ads. So for example, this welcome section here, you can just dismiss it. Um, and other things you can do is change these boxes that you first see in the beginning. Um, for example, um, WordPress events and news. If you do need that, you can keep it where it is, or you can click and drag these boxes um, to where you want it. Um, if there's some of these boxes that you absolutely don't need, so for example, the news and events, you can go into screen options and you can uncheck the boxes that you don't need. So this is the WordPress news and events. Um, I don't really need that. So I'm going to click on WordPress news and events and that's been taken away. I don't need quick draft, so I can take that away as well and everything else. Um, and so this dashboard is fully customizable and there'll be things added to it, the more plugins that you add. So for example, if you add Gravity Forms, you'll get another box for Gravity Forms, Elementor, any kind of plugins, um, SEO plugins, things like that. Um, they'll all be added here as a dashboard as well. So in the dashboard, you have the update section and any upcoming updates that you'll need to do will be set here. So right now everything's up to date, but the more plugins you'll add, the more likely you need to be updating them kind of every week. Um, and you'll see an overview of what plugins and things need to be updated as well. And you can also see uh, what version of uh, WordPress that it's currently on as well.
Next, you have the post section. And this is where all of the blog content goes. So by default, when you first install WordPress, you'll have the Hello World uh, blog post. Um, you can click into that. It's already published. And you can see how the blog looks on the back end and how it looks on the front end. Um, this post overview is where you'll uh, add all of the um, post content. So you can have all of the post content here. And you can add uh, all the post blocks as well with Gutenberg, whether that's heading, gallery, paragraph, images, things like that. You can add all of them um, and click into all of them as well. Um, Within the post content, you can uh, add featured images. Um, so if you click on featured image, um, you'll be able to upload images directly from your computer library or you can direct it from your media library. Um, and media library is essentially all the images that you've uploaded to your site will be saved here that you can reuse uh, on different parts of your website as well. Um, your posts can be organized into categories and tags as well. Um, and you can give it an excerpt and depending on what theme you use, the excerpt will show on like the post page or like the home page. It might not always show. Sometimes the listing will only show a uh, heading and an image. Um, hence why it says optional. Um, it just depends on your theme. So this is the overview of the posts. Um, and again, all the posts that you write, whether they're published or not, they'll all be showed up here um, with the publishing date as well. Similar to the uh, dashboard, if you click on screen options, you can really see customize this dashboard. So for example, um, you can customize what columns can be seen. So if you don't want to see the column, the author column or the comments column, you can take those away. You can decide how many uh, uh, number of items per page. So by default set to 20, you can set it to 10 or 30. Obviously, the bigger this number is, the longer it might take to load this dashboard. So just to be aware of that. Um, and then you've got compact view and extended view as well. Um, so it's up to you uh, how you want to dis uh, display this dashboard of yours. Um, but essentially all of your uh, posts, plugins, dashboard will all be here. Um, and then you can filter by dates as well. You can filter by categories and you can do bulk actions as well and things like that. Um, other things you can do within this post dashboard, you can see there's the add new button and this will just add new menu. This will just add a new post. You can do that here. You can do that in the add new button over here. Um, and you can also do it under the new button as well under post. Um, and you can also organize your categories. So if you click into categories, by default, WordPress will always have the uncategorized category. Um, but uh, you can also add new categories. So to add a new one, um, you would just click type in the name of the category. The URL slug, you don't have to type that in. If you leave it blank, it'll just take the name title and use that as the slug. Um, and then you can give it a descri description as well. Um, again, similar to the excerpt of a post, it's not always uh, visible. Sometimes it'll just show uh, just the name and the just the name of it and the link. Um, but some themes may choose to show it. So you can give it a description as well. It's also good for a back end use. So you can describe what this category is for and then click add new category. Um, and then other thing you can do is add a assign it a parent category. So if you have a category that's meant to be a subcategory of an existing category, all you would need to do is type in the name um, of the category. And then under parent category, you want to give it the actual category that it's meant to be a subcategory of. Give it a description if you'd like and click add new category. And you can see, and you can see there is no limit on how many categories you can apply or you can add. Um, you can add as many as you need, um, but essentially you want to make sure that you're adding parent categories if you need to. And then once you've added all your categories, um, you can then assign those posts to the different categories. Um, you can also add categories directly from the posts back end. If you click into a post, um, you can see there is the uh, option for categories and you can see the existing category that we have. And we can also add a new category directly um, from here as well. And you can add a parent category to that as well. Um, and then update as you need. Another thing you can do is add tags as well. Um, tags are similar to categories, except tags have no hierarchy. Um, it's just another way of organizing your categories, but there's no like sub tag 
or anything like that equivalent to like a subcategory. Um, to add a new tag, you would just type in the name of the tag that you want. You can give it a slug if you want, but if not, similar to categories, it'll just take the name of the tag um, and use that as a slug. And again, similar to the description, um, it's not just dis displayed by default. It just depends on the theme that you use. Will it display the category or the tag or not? And just click add new tag to add that as a tag. The next thing then is the media library and the media library is essentially um, where all of your media is stored once you've uploaded it to the site. This isn't just images, it can be content like uh, documents, site, uh, audio files, video files, PDFs, things like that. Um, it's all be going to be saved here. To add a new one directly to the media library, you can click on add new, click on select files and it'll open up your computer library. And you could just click on the file that you want. And you can see it uploads immediately. Um, and you can see when you give it, uh, when you upload it, you have space to add alt text. Um, alt text is really good for SEO because it tells Google search engines what this image is about. And you can rank for those for this text as well. Um, and you can give it a caption. And again, depending on the theme that you use, um, sometimes it'll display the caption. Um, another thing that it does is it can copy the URL to um, the, the it'll give each file a URL and this will be good if you have any documents to display. You can paste the URL in, the, in, in buttons so then when people click on it they can download a PDF. But essentially all of your uh, items and media files will go here. Next tab you have is the pages and the pages tab is where basically all the pages on your website go. Um, so by default, you get the privacy page and the sample page, but if you want, you can add a new page just through here. And you can add the name of the page. Now, depending on how you plan on building your site, um, if you have a theme, and you've decided to purchase a theme, then, or even download a free theme, then, the home page can be edited from here. If you decide to use a page builder like Divi or Edit or Elementor, um, you can design your own page um, using those elements as well. It's just important that you have the actual page uh, set up first um, and give it a featured image. And then depending on how, what theme and what plugins you're using, you can edit the pages that way. The next thing uh, then is the comments. So if there's a comment section on any part of your website, usually it's in the blogs, they'll all be here. And the way the comments work is that they kind of allow your visitors to have a discussion with you and each other. Um, and when you activate comments on a page or a post, WordPress installs several kind of text boxes after your content where people can submit their comments. And you can see with the comments, um, you can change the status of them to uh, pending, which means cust comments are submitted by your visitors but won't be visible on your blog. Um, approved, meaning comments are published and are visible. Spam, are comments flagged as, uh, flagged as spam. And then trash, are comments marked as unwanted and they'll be automatically deleted after 30 days. Um, you can reply to comments and you can also choose to edit anyone's comments as well. Um, once a visitor submits his or her comments, WordPress will follow your preferences and either hold the comment for your approval or post it immediately. Um, if you see a comment that's been marked as spam and you actually realize it's a real comment, then you can mark it as not spam as well. To look at your discussion settings, all you need to do is go into uh, settings and go into discussion. And you can see the comment settings here. So you can choose to whether or not allow people to post a comment without filling their name or email, if they have to be logged in. Um, if posts are older than 14 days, you can automatically close comment boxes. So uh, older comment posts aren't uh, are able to have comments on them. You can show uh, comments cookies. You can break comments into pages, things like that. You can set up notifications as well. So anyone put if anyone posts a comment, you get an email or if a comment is held for moderation. Um, your default post settings is uh, allow people to submit comments on new posts um, or you can allow link and notifications from other blogs. Um, before a comment appears, you can decide if you want to, to manually approve the comment or uh, if the 
author has previously approved comment, then you can uh, allow it to post as well. So all your discussion settings are set here. The next thing then is appearance. So this is where all of your themes go. So WordPress uses themes to control the design and layout of your site. Um, themes are essentially site files that are stored and they control every part of your website in terms of how the header should look, how a default page structure should be, the footer, things like that. Um, so when you first install WordPress, you get the 2023 theme or uh, depending on what year you install WordPress, it'll be a new theme depending on the year. Um, to add a new theme, all you need to do is click on add new. And you can see the theme directory here. There's loads of themes you can pick from. Um, free and uh, paid. So if you go into the feature filter, what you can do is um, you can browse by subject if you know what type of uh, website you're doing. Um, if it's a food and drink website, if you, there's certain features you want to add with certain layouts. Um, so for example, if you click blog and click apply filters, it'll show all the themes that are uh, optimized for like a blog content layout and you can click into them and you can preview them as well so if I click on preview um, it can show me basically the fonts that are going to be used the colors and things like that and it can also give you a briefing as well as to how um, this theme works um, and things like that so on the wordpress directory itself there's free themes but you can also go onto and websites like infanto elements um, to look at premium themes as well um, so all your themes basically are managed here. Next thing is the plugins. So plugins are essentially a piece of software that plugs into your WordPress site. Um, plugins can add new functionality, extend existing functionality on your site um, that allows you to create any kind of website. So for example, if you wanted to make a word uh, e-commerce website on your WordPress, then you need to install a plugin called WooCommerce, um, which is an all-in-one solution for e-commerce websites for you to sell products, set up products, sell them, create shipping information, uh, delivery information, things like that. Um, booking websites, you might want to use uh, plugins like Amelia. Um, event management websites, plugins like uh, Modern Event Calendar, all ex are plugins that extend the functionality and create new functionality. There are also plugins to help uh, performance, so things like caching plugins. There's also plugins that help communications, like uh, Gravity Forms to help for forms plugins as well. Then there's also page builders, which are different kind of plugins. Um, to add a new plugin, you need to just go into the plugin. There's two ways. You can either go into plugins, click on add new, and open the WordPress directory for plugins. Um, all the free plugins that will be found in the WordPress directory, so things like Classic Editor, Gutenberg, BuddyPress are all free plugins. You can go into popular and see what the popular plugins are, what recommended plugins there are, um, and things like that. Um, and they're all free and you can install them directly to the WordPress directory. So for example, if you go into WooCommerce and click install now, that'll install the plugin. After installing it, you need to activate it as well. So we'll wait for this to install. And you'll see after we need to activate it. So now it's an activate uh, install. So now we just click activate to actually activate the uh, plugin. And all plugins that you install will need be uh, installed the same way. You just need to install it first and then click activate. And usually, what happens whenever you add a new plugin is that it'll add itself onto the side menu here.
sometimes when you install them, they come with a setup setup wizard as well. Um, so you can set up uh, as a step by step guide as opposed to as yourself. Um, we have a full video on how to set up WooCommerce um, in our channel below if you'd like to check that out. Um, in the meantime, we'll just skip the setup wizard for this uh, for WooCommerce for now. And you can see with the new plugin, it's added itself to the left menu. Sometimes it adds itself as new tabs. So like the WooCommerce uh, plugin adds itself as new tabs on the left. Um, and sometimes they add itself within existing tabs. So sometimes it'll be within the settings tab and sometimes they'll be within the tools tab um, and they'll be kind of uh, set up here. Um, within the plugins dashboard, so once as you add more and more plugins, initially there's no plugins added when you first install WordPress, um, but all the plugins that you add will be in the plugins dashboard. And as well as in the updates dashboard tab, you'll also see the updates here. So if there's a plugin that needs updating, it'll show here that a plugin needs updating and you can update directly from the public plugins dashboard. So that's one way to add plugins. The other way to add plugins, um, and this is more for if this is a paid plugin, is if you go to the plugins website directly and purchase the plugin and download it from there. So for example, um, the Elementor plugin. Elementor is a really popular page builder. Um, while the Elementor Basic is free, the pro version of Elementor is uh, a paid plugin. So in order to uh, get the plugin, what you need to do is create an account, uh, purchase a plugin, um, if you click on the pricing, and look for the page builder plugin or whichever plugin it is that you want, and essentially you buy the plugin that you need, you'll be able to access the plugin from your account page and download the plugin from there. And then once you have the uh, plugin downloaded, what you need to do is go into Upload Plugin, choose File, and uh, select the plugin that you just downloaded. And just open that plugin. Make sure that it's zipped and you don't unzip the plugin that you have. And just click Install Now to begin installing that plugin. And then once it's installed, you want to click Activate Plugin. Um, and you can see the plugin's been act uh, installed and activated. With some plugins, it'll let you know if you're missing something. So for example, this plugin here, where you're missing the basic Elementor plugin, so you can download it directly from there. But essentially, all of your plugins, you're going to be managing from this plugin's dashboard. The next tab you want to go over is the users, and this is essentially where all of the users that have access to your site, any kind of access to your site, will be stored here. This includes any admin plugin, admin users, editor users, uh, and users, um, subscriber users, things like that. Um, so there's lots of different uh, roles uh, for users. There's admin who have complete control over. Uh, the website website. Um, when you first install WordPress, your admin user that you add is an admin user. Um, admin users uh, can add, edit, um, delete users. They can um, uh, control content across each site. 
Then you've got the editor, which can manage and publish posts um, and schedule content, but they can't install, activate plugins, or manage themes. Then you've got the author user, who can write and publish their own posts and pages. They can delete their own posts, but they can't publish, edit, or delete anyone else's posts. So editors can do that, and authors can't. Contributors can write their posts um, as well, but they have to post it for review. They can't publish it themselves. An admin or an editor account will need to uh, publish it themselves. And then you've got subscriber, and they can manage their own profiles, read their posts on WordPress site, but they can't write their own publish or posts or write their own blogs or anything like that. Um, so to create a new user role, you need to have the user attach it to. So what you need to do is go into add new on the user dashboard. And the first thing you need to add is their username. So this is the username that they'll use to um, sign into. Then you want to assign them an email, and it's important that you give them an email so that if they are, if there's any issues, um, they can reset their own passwords and things like that. Um, then you can give them a first name and a last name. This just makes it a bit more personable when they log in. So you can see at the top here, it says my name at the top. So it makes it a bit more personable. It's good if you're adding a client to your website. Um, you can have their first name and last name. And next thing then you need to generate a password. There's two ways to do the password. You can either generate a random password. And if you're assigning the website for another person, you can send them the password. That's not always the best thing to do as sending passwords over email or anything um, isn't secure. So what you can do instead is send a user notification. So instead of you setting the password, the users will get a, the users will get a email from WordPress uh, saying this is your email account, this is your user account, and then we'll give them a link to set their own passwords essentially. And the next thing then you want to give them the role. So you've got obviously um, admin, editor, author, contributor, contributor, and subscriber. Because we added WooCommerce, it added uh, two new user roles as uh, for customer and shop manager. Um, so depending on what plugins you add, there's be some other user roles that will be added. But by default, the main ones are admin, editor, author, contributor, and subscriber. And you select which uh, user that you have, and then just click add new user. Um, and you can see in the user's dashboard exactly you know, who's on the site, who what users have access. And again, with like the other ones, you have screen options and you can um, control what is actually on the screen as well. Next thing then is the tools. And these are essentially WordPress tools. You won't always need them. It's good for if you're importing and exporting things um, from one site to another, from one WordPress site to another. The main thing you want to look at is the site health. Um, and this gives you an overview of the general sta state of your site. Um, what it'll do is it'll give you recommendations on what you should do. So one of the recommendations is to remove inactive themes um, to help your site security. And one or more recommended modules are missing. So some uh, modules are missing for PHP. So what you want to do is essentially look at the site health and if you have the technical you know, capability you can uh, sort out these site health issues by yourself. Um, the other thing you can do is take these issues and contact your hosting provider um, as they'll be able to be equipped on how to ha handle these issues. They'll either tell you how to do it or they can do it themselves. So the other thing you can do then is settings and this is a general settings for your WordPress website. Things like your site title and tagline are controlled here. Um, depending on if you have a membership site, you can decide if you want anyone can register. Default roles, as you said, with subscriber, but you can change that to default role to be editor um, or whatever default role that you want. It's also important that you have the correct time zone, time format, uh, date format and site language. Um, on your site as well and what week the site starts on. Then you've got other options like writing. Um, so with that you have options on what category something's supposed to be on, what post format something's supposed to be on, things like that. Um, and then you've got reading as well. Um, so if the home page is meant to display your latest posts or static page. If it's a static page you can decide which is your home page and which is your uh, post page and how many pages, how many posts the blog page is meant to show at a time, um, and 
full text uh, post feed as well. Another uh, important feature that you may or may not want to use is search engine visibility. So whether or not you want to discourage search engines from indexing the site. Now, if your site is not ready uh, for public viewing, um, you can check that. Again, it's up to search engines to honor this request, but essentially there'll be robots blocking the site and Google will be able to visit it. Um, it's, I guess, useful if you wanted to stop people from looking at a site that's not finished. However, you need to remember to uh, enable that again. Otherwise, once the site is ready and this isn't enabled, it won't be ranking for anything. Um, next thing then is permalinks. Um, so with the permalinks, uh, by default it'll just show post name, but you can give it a custom structure um, or a plain structure as well. Um, you want to go for something a bit readable, so post name or custom structure would work. Um, and then just save your changes once you're, once you're done. So that's basically it. That's how you would um, uh, install WordPress and a basic kind of overview of WordPress. Um, for more information on how to install themes, what kind of themes you should use, page builders, uh, please check out our channel. We have lots of video videos um, about that as well. Thank you.